This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 83 of the Wisdom by Wessa show on the Horse Radio Network. This is Mike Janell. I'm Casey Wilbanks Coletti. And this is Sophia Yagala. Welcome to Wisdom by Wessa on the Horse Radio Network. This podcast is brought to you by the Western and English Sales Association. WESA, which provides the world's largest trade events for retailers, manufacturers, and sales representatives of the equestrian industry. In this podcast, we feature exclusive interviews with noteworthy Western and English personalities, retailers, and exhibitors who you've always wanted to talk to. Don't miss out on all the news for manufacturers and retailers in the equine industry. Sophia is here with us today to tell us about a new staff member for WESA. Yes, Jeff has now taken over the role of our trade show manager. As Kristen, the previous trade show manager, is no longer with the association, and everyone will be able to meet Jeff at the August WESA trade show in Dallas. Tell us a little bit more about Jeff. Jeff is a Colorado native and has customer service and event management experience. And some exhibitors might actually already know him because he has worked with WESA and our exhibitors during the last two years of WESA being at the Denver location at the Denver Mart. Speaking about teams, you've previously mentioned some open sales rep positions. Are there any updates? Yes. So the members that are currently looking for sales reps are Be Elegant and Cobbler Inc. And both of those descriptions and the contact information is on our website, westatrader.com, under resources and then the networking tab. Western wear brands and Western wear retailers have been adopting online technology such as websites and online sales channels for some time. But today, some brands and stores are taking a large step forward by working with content creators like Cowboy Boot content creator Jeremiah Craig, who produces high-quality, highly entertaining online content to help them capture attention and build sales. Jeremiah made his very first visit to a Wessa show in January. He joins us today to talk about that experience and what the future holds for more content-focused marketing in the boot and Western wear world. Jeremiah Craig, welcome to the Wisdom by Wessa podcast. Thank you so much for having me. This is great. I love your love your podcast. Well, we always like to hear that good news. We'd like to know the people are listening. I am enthusiastic about this show. I'm enthusiastic about all of our episodes, but sometimes we get into projects and and topics that we really haven't explored as much as we probably should have or will in the future. But you represent a marketing trend and a marketing technique that I think has been used in other industries much more. But, you know, you are an influencer in the boot world. And we'll talk a bit more about that. But I guess maybe I should just let you explain if somebody stops you at a party or on an elevator or whatever and says, so, Jeremiah, what is it you do in that Western world? And why don't you explain to us and we'll go from there. Usually I come across folks and tell them that uh, I'm a content creator. So I make videos for YouTube that have to do with cowboy boots. I'll also write blog posts, make images for Facebook and Instagram and sort of cut up videos. And sometimes I'll do podcasts too when I interview um, custom cowboy boot makers. So I, I, I like to call myself a content creator since the quote unquote influencer, it, it gets a bad rap, I think, from a lot of folks. And I worked in marketing um, for agencies who had to deal with influencers. So I, I know both sides of it. And oftentimes working with influencers can be a drag and just a pain for companies. Um, so I try to stray away from that title, even though that's pretty much what I do. I'm going to strike the word from my vocabulary. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> we talked a little bit the other day about how you how you got into providing content related to cowboy boots because it's kind of a unique little market and I know you're also a musician uh, you probably could or maybe you do do content there but kind of bring us into your involvement in the cowboy boot business and also maybe how your music career is compatible sure I would love to 
it all started back in 2006 when I got my first pair of cowboy boots. Uh, I'm not from any of the you know stereotypical states where they are popular. I'm from Western New York, about an hour outside of Buffalo, and uh, I I was going through sneakers and shoes like crazy. I would have to duct tape them up, and it, it just got to be a pain. So I noticed that my brother uh, had recently gotten some cowboy boots, and I looked him over, and I was like, you know, maybe these will last more than four to six months. So I got myself a pair over at Davis Trailer World. Uh, Miss Davis helped me out. It's a great little store. I love the little cowboy boot stores and Western wear stores. And uh, I still have the same pair today, 15, 16 years later, or whatever it is. And uh, I absolutely love it. I was sold on cowboy boots. I bought three more pairs from Davis Trail World and took my friends there uh, to, to get them their first pair of cowboy boots. And eventually, over the past, you know, uh, three or four years, uh, I, I, I guess I started doing a lot of content about cowboy boots because of, uh, one, my music. I wanted more people to listen to my music because I was having trouble, you know, uh, touring and things like that, making enough money uh, they, from what they tell you to do. You know, they used to say, go on tour and it'll eventually happen. It didn't eventually happen with me. So uh, I tried to figure out a different way. Uh, and and approached it online instead, and I, I tack on my music and in, incorporate my music into my videos. Uh, but also, I just wanted to share my, I just wanted to share my enthusiasm the same way that I did with my friends uh, when I first got into cowboy boots. You know, I would take them shopping; it would be such a great time. Help them get their cowboy boots, and uh, I I just sort of started doing that online and helping everybody. And it's been just an awesome, fun time, especially with my music in, involved with that, too. Well, that's a good start. Casey and I uh, go back a ways, and Casey and I years ago did some really rudimentary content creation, and the art and the technology has certainly grown beyond that. Uh, but Casey, uh, jump in here a little bit and talk about the role of someone creating content in the Western product world. Well, yes, I don't think it's an easy task. As as Mike mentioned, uh, we had worked um, within social media and the Western industry for quite some time. And we started quite a few years ago. And now when I look at it, I'm thinking, how do they keep coming up with content? Because it, that that's obviously a huge part of it. It's wh when do you run out? How do you keep coming up with the new ideas? So very cool um, what you're doing. Uh, hats off to you on that. I am on your YouTube channel right now, Jeremiah Craig, 24.8 thousand. Um, subscribers. So that's awesome. But I wanted to ask you, when you team up with the brands and um, you you do your content creation, are they able to, I'm taking it that this means they're able to use the content for their social media platform? Yes. Sometimes I have deals with brands um, like Ariat, for example, where they pay me to make content and then I send them the content to use however they wish after it's published on mine, uh, on my channel. Mm -hmm. So this has happened previously uh, in a pair of uh, wide calf cowboy boots that uh, me and my wife did for, for mm -hmm. Ariat. Uh, we sent them the entire video file, the premiere profile so that they could actually go in and cut it up themselves. And they used it for Facebook ads on their end. So uh, wow. it's just, it's, I'll, I'll make, I'll make whatever I can for the <laughs> brand or for the retailer, uh, send it off their way so that they can use it in whatever way that they want. It's, it's all a matter of all of us growing yeah. together. So one thing Mike and I always used to try to hit home to people whom we were helping with their social media and helping market them was, authenticity and but it seems that it, it's evolved because we've had it's kind of you mentioned influencer um not going to mention that okay but that was mm -hmm. a big thing for a while humor is a big thing for a while obviously the authenticity and that's where i kind of got it was like where do you go from here and so just 
maybe describe to me what, uh, what, what you say your content creation, what is the vibe for your content creation? I call myself a cowboy boot enthusiast. Right. I'm not going to come out okay. here and say that I'm a I'm an expert or anything like that sure. uh, because I don't build the boots. I don't uh, yeah. sell the boots. I, I, I'm just enthusiastic about Western yeah. wear. And I think more people need to to wear them. And uh, that goes. I, I guess I deliver that message with enthusiasm, but also um, a pretty, pretty positive and happy dude most of the time. So <laughs> um, I'm pretty energetic in that way. Uh, I, I, I can come across as funny sometimes, whether I'm making fun of myself <laughs> because I said something stupid or if I'm trying to make a joke, uh, I do have a, a, a couple of, uh, of silly YouTube videos up like, uh, uh, living up to the American stereotype by wearing cowboy boots or something where I'm trying to get more Americans to wear <laughs> cowboy boots. And it's kind of a funny little twist on things. Uh, so, so I'll, I'll definitely incorporate humor as well. I think the struggle with authenticity, like you're saying, uh, comes into what people are willing to post and how insecure they might be about posting it. So coming from a marketing background as well, I have my, uh, I have my degree in advertising and public relations. And like I mentioned a little bit earlier, I worked for agencies uh, as well. Part of success in content marketing from at least from the way that I approach it is posting as much as possible. It's quantity of posts over the quality of posts. So I might put up a video that I'm not happy with, uh, whether it's the way that I performed in it, uh, the way that mm -hmm. I spoke in it, there might be an audio mistake or a, a technology failure, um, but I'll still post it anyways because quality is subjective. People will come across a video and find value in it, whether it's recorded on a phone or whether Steven Spielberg recorded it and then added <laughs> in all these extra visual effects, right? So it's not for me to judge what comes across as um, quality. It's about posting as much as possible and trying to get over myself so that I'm not judging my own content. I, I think that's where a lot of people fail uh, and, and start to get insecure when it comes to the authenticity of their posts. That's And, and when you just keep posting quantity uh, as much as possible, often, authenticity just happens. Happens. Not, yeah. Interesting. And at the end of the day, you are just a com boot consumer like the rest of us. And so exactly. I would see where people can re relate to you. I'll tell you what I'm exactly. thinking as I'm, as I'm listening to, the, to this. I mean, we've been in the business for a while, Casey and I. Uh, we'll talk about your trip to Wessa as well. But there are so many people out there for the brands or for the retailers. They are up to their ears in work. They're trying to sell boots. They're trying to make boots. They're dealing with supply chains. They know in their heart that something like this would help build their brand, help build their sales, but they don't know how to get it started. And it seems to me that at least those people in the boot business, you know, uh, as, if they hear this show especially, can breathe a sigh of relief that there's somebody out there who can take this particular burden off their plate and help them do their job while they focus on the 25 other things they have to do. You know, that's a great way to put it, Mike, and I feel the exact same way. I'm here to help the retailers and the brands sell more boots, and I tell people that all the time. I'm here to help them sell more boots and create excitement around their brand. It is tough to create a content and marketing strategy when you're worried about making boots, when you're worried about even getting the boxes in because of the supply chain issues. Like at Westa, I'm talking with uh, these boot manufacturers and they're saying that they can't even get paper for boxes. So it's crazy right now when you have to deal with all that, who's thinking about content marketing? That's where I come in. I'm more than happy to help these retailers, the, the small retailers and the brands um, get their, get their name and brand out there. Talk a bit about what your offering is to retailers. Oh, and I know you have developed an approach 
that brand that retailers can take advantage of. But for the retailers who are in the audience, and we hope there are quite a few of them, what is it you can do for a retailer to let them take advantage of content marketing? That's a great question. And I try to help the retailers, the small retailers, not not the big franchise ones, the, the places that have, you know, one or maybe two, three locations, because that is where I feel the Western wear industry is is the most passionate, the most knowledgeable. That's where I got my first four pairs of boots was at a small uh, a small Western wear store, family owned. Um, and those are the places that I like helping the most at as low a cost as possible. So I will do it at no cost. I, and I'll explain how I do it with other retailers because I've worked with several. Um, the most recent one that has worked out the best has been um, with cartersboots.com. Or maybe not the best, but it has worked out very well over the past two months that I've been doing it. Uh, Carter's Boots is a physical location and repair shop in Bozeman, Montana. Great place. I was there uh, back in April of last year. Uh, super small place, but just has so much passion there. And uh, I was speaking with Phil Jr. from Hondo Boots and asked him if he would be interested in, you know, doing a, a boot giveaway on my channel where I would do a review and an extended test, which is sort of like uh, Mike Rowe's dirty jobs, except for testing cowboy boots in the review. And then at the end, we do a little bit of a, a two week giveaway campaign. So Phil Jr. from Hondo Boots uh, donated the boots for that campaign. And then I was able to deliver all of the traffic to cartersboots.com where we can track the sales of those boots through a promotion code or a coupon code. Uh, it's just using my name, Jeremiah Craig at checkout. And that gives the, uh, the customer 10% off. And that way, uh, both Hondo Carter's boots and also myself can see how well the campaign is doing. And also everybody wins because Hondo boots are being sold. Uh, Carter's Boots is selling Honda boots and the customer is happy with the boots that they receive. And then I also get a small commission off of that. And with that campaign, that's this is where my music comes into it. After those two weeks are over, then I do a, a live stream where I mix music and boot topics where I'm talking with people live in the live chat of YouTube. I'm playing music talking boots and giving stuff away, including the pair of boots for the campaign, always hyping up the retailer, most of all. So I'm like, if you guys want these boots, cartersboots.com. And then after that, I sort of take out sections from the video and post them as their own videos. So where the, the review might get six, seven, maybe 10,000 views, then uh, I'll put an ad in a video that I take out of the live stream and that will get like sometimes 24,000 views. So um, just trying to get as much brand recognition out there for the, the small stores across America, America, because they need the help most, especially nowadays. Now you put the deal together for Carter's and with Hondo, but if a brand or a retailer reaches out to a brand or vice versa, and they've agreed they would like to cooperate on a similar thing, can they then come to you uh, and you can help them work out the details? Yes, of course. And it, it worked out so well with cartersboots.com that we will be pursuing another giveaway camp campaign here in April and May. So um, it's, it's a great, great way to get the name out there at an extremely low cost, especially if uh, we work together and have the brand uh, supply the boots. That way, no money comes out of the retailer's pocket up front. And Phil Jr. has uh, spoken with me. And if anybody listening knows uh, Phil Giharo Jr. of Honda Boots, he says that he's more than happy to uh, give a testimonial to anybody who's interested uh, because he's seen the returns on his end as well. Well, great. Now, you were at your first WESA show. 
Casey and I have been to a lot of Wes's shows. It is the boot haven, if you will. Everyone and everybody is there, which is the reason that Wessa does the shows to begin with. But from your perspective, talk a bit about your experience and your thoughts as you spent time at your very first show. Oh, it was, there was so much going on. I felt like I couldn't even take it all in. It definitely gave me a, a interesting coming back next year. Uh, and maybe even in August, we'll see. But uh, there was just so much going on. It was incredible to talk with the sales representatives and the marketing folks at the booth uh, in the downstairs area, but then also in the showrooms as well to see what is going on and how companies are reacting not only to what customers are asking for most, but how they're reacting to the current climate as well. Uh, it, it gave me a perspective that I've never had before being a consumer myself into what actually goes into getting boots in stores. It, it blew my mind and uh, I loved every second of it. Well, I'm glad, and as we mentioned before, that's what these people spend most of their time thinking about. Content creation is way, way down on the list, and if they even understand it at all, but I think in their gut they feel they need it. Casey, you've been doing this for quite a while as well. You and I have been to Wes's shows, but uh, your take on how all this is coming. Yeah, I think it's very cool. I think it takes somebody um, very forward-thinking to compete in the social media realm at this point. And I talk about that a lot. Anytime somebody calls me and says, well, hey, you used to do social media, you know. And I said, it is way different now, way different. So hats off to you for thinking of something really cool and new and fun. I mentioned that your YouTube channel was Jeremiah Craig. Um, what other platforms do you use? I use Spotify. So if anyone wants to listen to my music, they can find me on Spotify. Also search Jeremiah Craig. I have a website. Uh, it's jeremiahcraig.com. Basically, if anybody wants to just search Jeremiah Craig in Google, I pretty much have the whole first page. So uh, you can pretty much find me anywhere. And I try to make it as easy as possible. Right. Good. And really great views on your videos. I'm, I'm looking at the number count. And very, very consistent. And there's a lot of content. When you say content creator, there is a lot of content on here. So, yes, I think I have, cool. uh, I definitely have over 300 videos about cowboy boots alone, if not over 400 now. Uh, I've been only doing it for three years. So I've, I've gone all in, um, all in. And it's, uh, it's, it's a matter of listening to, my viewers and in the comments section, you'll see me reply to a lot of comments to find out what they want to see. And also through keyword research, uh, doing some Google research and, and just to see what people are interested in so that I can make content about that and help people find their first pairs of boots and uh, love the choice that they made. Uh, I get messages every day of folks reaching out and saying, Hey man, I got the first pair of boots and I absolutely love it. Thank you so much for your content. And, and it means so much to me that uh, people are finding it and finding value in it. That's, that's, well, that's all I want to do. I want to make people excited. I'm going to throw this at you. It's probably not going to stay just cowboy boots for long. We'll see. I mean, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people want me to do hat videos, cowboy hat videos, but Coming from the Northeast, I have no idea uh, about <laughs> anything with hats. So I, I've kind of, uh, I've kind of told everybody that I'll approach it as the as the dumb person, you know, learning about <laughs> cowboy hats, so that people can learn with me, uh, and I can be the 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 person That's who's funny. corrected. So we'll see what happens. I would love to be that person for folks. <laughs> Well, I think that's uh, I think that would that would be interesting. But and and kind of going on with uh, Casey's comment, you've got so much content out there about boots. What other things about boots do you want to get involved in uh, storytelling with? Oh, I would love to do more in-person events. So help 
connect folks who are interested in cowboy boots because it's it's like this world uh, that once you're a part of, you start understanding more and more and more of where you can stop somebody on the street who has a nice pair of boots and be like, hey, that's a nice pair of full quill ostrich. Who makes those? And they're like, Lucchese. And then you have like this, all of, you have this, this connection out of nowhere. And it just makes days better. And I feel like, especially nowadays, we just need more of those, you know, one-off connections where you just had a positive experience with a stranger. So the more that I can um, help set up those situations in real life and bring my boots and ballads, live streams, and maybe the giveaways to, uh, to a, a real life event space or like a weekend festival or something, that is something that I'm pursuing seriously over the next five years. I would love to set up events like that. Well, I think you've got your plate full and you're going to put more on it. I've certainly enjoyed this conversation. I was looking forward to it when I learned you were going to be a guest. As I mentioned, I look forward to all of our shows because we really have some smart, neat, hardworking people on here who bring a perspective from different parts of the country, uh, different backgrounds. We've talked about social media. A lot of stores have a website um, maybe a little other stuff there, but you uh, have kind of put together an approach that I was unaware of, and I've been in the business for a while, and I was really excited to have you on and uh, talk about the many ways that, from your perspective, social media can be used to help both brands and retailers, because I suspect we're going to see a lot more of it. I hope so. The more cowboy boots, that we see online, the more people that'll be interested. So thank you so much for having me on here. Uh, I think you're doing a great thing uh, with this podcast. I was surprised and honored when I got the invite to, to, to be a guest. So thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Well, hey, and thank you for your time. I think we've enjoyed it a lot. There are show notes and links from today's show at wisdombywessa.com. And, of course, we'd love to hear your feedback. And we have a contact link on that site for you to do so. The Wisdom by Wessa show will be published on the 15th and 30th of every month. You can listen on most of your favorite podcast players. And you can also listen on the Horse Radio Network app on your iOS or Android phone. You just search Horse Radio Network in the App Store. It's free and it's super easy to use. Be sure to visit all the great shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Thanks for listening to the Wisdom by Wessa podcast. Wessa, where the industry meets.